Mami, he tratado de todo. Da esa numeración y que manden el helicóptero. Aquí tengo dos días tirado. Por favor, se lo suplicamos. En usted también estamos confiando. Por favor, ayúdenos a saber alguna información de mi hermanito. Por favor, se lo suplicamos. Tengo mucha hambre, ya no aguanto, me voy a desmayar. Que manden el helicóptero. Si no, mañana ya no amanezco, ya no aguanto. In the last two decades, thousands of people have died trying to cross Arizona's southern desert into the United States. No one knows the true number of people who've gone missing, never to be heard from again. Otro día más y mucho, otros dos días, si yo ya no sobrevivo, ya no hubiera aguantado. So when the U.S.'s approach to immigration is built on hostility and incarceration, who is willing to save migrants when the desert gets the better of them? How close to death does a migrant need to be for Border Patrol to rescue them? If we have a asset nearby that can rescue somebody, we will use that asset. Civilian volunteers have stepped in when official efforts fail. But their ability to help has its limits. Hey, sir, you cannot do that. No. Please step They're back. under our custody. It's nearly impossible to make this journey without a smuggler. But the thing is, they often mislead migrants about just how dangerous it is and charge thousands of dollars. No es como le pintan a uno al desierto y todo. Si es complicado. This is Martin, a Guatemalan man who was stranded on the Babakivari Mountains for three days in February after he was abandoned by a smuggler. We've changed his name to maintain his privacy. Cuando yo me quedé, lo primero que fue es encomendarme en Dios y en las manos de Dios, porque Dios es lo primero. Temperatures dipped below freezing at night. His only shelter was a garbage bag. Yo sentía cuando llegaban los coyotes hacia mí y me olfateaban y me olfateaban y yo solo me enrollaba y, y se iba. Llegaban y se iba. He called 911 for help, but as the hours passed, he wasn't so sure he'd make it. So his family reached out to some local humanitarians. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. Yeah, are you guys Green Valley? Yeah. We got bugs up there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Green Valley. Give us a good look. Really? Damn, yeah. they're out in force. Frontera Aid Collective is part of a small network of volunteers doing the dangerous work of searching for people in the desert. Arizona's Sonoran Desert is a vast, harsh wilderness that stretches across several U.S. states and Mexico. Did you guys get a group out there or something? Nope. Oh, there's nothing going on? Okay, all right, have a good one. David, Taylor, Scott, and Bryce all work full-time jobs, but they volunteer pretty much every moment of their free time to preventing people from dying. If this bottle is encountered by other humanitarians, they'll know when it was dropped off. They say groups like theirs exist because, through a combination of policy and neglect, Border Patrol has systematically failed to save lives. It's a very common thing that somebody will call 911 and the call will just go nowhere. In order to get some kind of help, and it ends up being these like private groups who will go out. We'll never really know the actual number of people who've died out here because rescuers like Bryce and Taylor can only count the remains they find. It's devastating. And I mean, not, not just for us. I mean, if the person is just left in this very remote area where their body will never be found, the family doesn't even know what happened. They can assume, but they never have that closure. If a person is never found, this is most likely the end result. And it's why some migrants end up calling 911, even though it means they'll be deported. Pues yo sentía que se me aceleraba el corazón y ya no daba más, no me dejaba respirar para yo poder seguir avanzando. Y así fue como yo me fui quedando y prácticamente me quiero que descansara y que siguiera el otro día. Ellos prácticamente según me iban a esperar, pero ya no. Volunteers called in, emailed and reported Martín's coordinates more than 40 times over the course of three days. But Border Patrol didn't rescue Martín. So aid workers went out on their own to get him. 
we asked the group to retrace their steps, and soon after, we spotted Border Patrol detaining migrants they'd found in the desert. We were about to witness firsthand why the relationship between humanitarians and Border Patrol can be turbulent. A lot of times when people are being detained, they've been out for many days and they haven't drank water or food. And a lot of times Border Patrol won't give it to them or they don't have it on hand. So it's just nice to offer. Hey, 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 sir, you cannot do that. No. Please step They're back. under our custody. We will give them water. <laughs> if you treat humanely, uh, your water not necessary. Every single time we've offered water to migrants when sir, they've been detained, that's they've water, been allowed. I'm just you. saying yeah, that's been common water. practice in the past. It, it, I understand. Thank, Thank you, so. you very much. Can we give it to you? Yes, sir. We have water, sir. We have water, we have food, we're okay. 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 Thank you very much. Dios los bendiga mucho. No, so, so, no, 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 Mucha suerte. Under Biden's administration, people caught by Border Patrol making an unauthorized crossing can't return to the U.S. for five years and can face criminal charges if they do. Buena suerte, amigo. Strange that they didn't let us give them water and stuff. Normally, they're a little bit more amicable with that, but yeah, it was a particularly hostile encounter. <laughs> it's still a little it's bit upsetting. worked up. Yeah. Yeah. It was because it's so unnecessary. These people have probably been out here for days and they're super, I'm assuming they're dehydrated because I get dehydrated out here after a couple hours. Is that what's going through your mind right now? That there could be other people out there needing your help? Absolutely. I, I mean, I wonder if there's someone like right here watching us and they're too afraid to come out. What if they get left behind and they needed help? I think there's a lot of times when we try to collaborate with Border Patrol for the better of people and then it's just completely negated in a way that is unnecessary because we, we're trying to collaborate. Giving a thirsty person water isn't illegal, but it can take on a highly politicized meaning in the borderlands where generations of ranchers live. So this is where we have to go through to get to the rescue spot. This gate opens up to public land, but to get to it, you have to drive down an access road that passes through a rancher's property. While the group filled out a sign-up sheet to pass through, a rancher came riding up. Hi. You guys aren't allowed to go in as you're just bringing more drugs and more people through our property. And I'm tired of it. Tired of them crossing, they cut fence lines, they cut water lines, they drain the water for the cattle. They are trashing the place, there is garbage, and you're just helping them come right through here. People making these crossings go to great lengths to stay hidden, but sometimes they leave things behind, and that's become a point of contention for some ranchers. Aid workers immediately backed off because ranchers have the power to get people banned from accessing public land through their property. And if that were to happen, the workers wouldn't be able to rescue anyone. This is mostly public land, so if you can't get through here, then we can't access the rest of the public land. So if this had happened, for instance, on the day that we were trying to rescue Martine, we'd still be out there right now. As we were preparing to leave, the rancher, who was frustrated by our questions, started removing our belongings. So you know, we're gonna get out of here. Mm. So you can't take that. Leave it. Leave it. Well, it's mine. Okay. Eventually, he handed over our things, and we decided to leave. After the confrontation, we asked the group about what the rancher said. Most of these people, I would say, are not criminals. They're coming here for either a better life, or they're escaping something in their country or really hard economic times. And I know that these ranchers and some of the other ones are involved in conservation here in the Southwest and, and maintaining these beautiful lands. But what would you rather have at the end of the day? Do you want do you want a black bottle or do you want a human 
dead body, right? Is that what you want on your property? It's U.S. policy that's pushing migrants to walk longer and farther through areas like this ranch. Border Patrol uses a strategy from the Clinton era that gives migrants no other choice but to travel through the most remote and hostile terrain. The idea was, if enough people got hurt, they'd stop coming. But the crossings and deaths have only intensified, and so has the underlying problem, which is the fact that most people who want to move to the U.S. for work have very few legal ways to do it. Martin's now back in Guatemala, but part of the reason people like him end up risking their lives is to escape conditions the U.S. helped create by destabilizing Central America for years. Guatemala's security forces are well-armed, well-trained, and feared. The U.S. backed a string of military dictators throughout Guatemala's civil war. In the end, over 200,000 people died and over a million were displaced. The violence and inequity that led to that conflict continues to this day. So now, almost half of all people in Guatemala live in poverty, and it has one of the highest child malnutrition rates in the world. People who get lost in the Sonoran Desert often can't call for help because of spotty cell reception. But Martin did have reception, and he gave 911 his coordinates. Fue donde llamé 911 y 911 a según iba a llegar por mí. O sea, así pasaba lo que es el helicóptero, a veces el avión sobre mí, le hacía seña, incluso me quité el suéter y con el suéter empecé a hacer seña, pero nunca bajaba por mí. We wanted to understand why Martin wasn't rescued by the helicopter flying above him. So we requested a ride along with a pilot from Air Force and Marine Operations who assist with Border Patrol search and rescues. Where are we right now? Uh, we are over the Baba Kivri uh, Mountains. That's the most identifiable uh, geographic reference point. This is near the location where Martin was stranded. We asked the pilot to generally explain what would prevent a helicopter from rescuing someone. So the biggest thing that's going to limit us from an air perspective of being able to rescue somebody is power considerations and landing consideration. And if we can't land, then we have to figure out other means of extraction. What else do you think would be important for the public to know about the work you're doing in your search and rescue efforts? Our number one job out here may be to, to defend our borders, but prevention of loss of life is equally as important. But can Border Patrol be both the primary responder to migrants in distress while deploying tactics that are actually pushing people closer to death? Hey, you see the helicopter up ahead? They might be scattering people. Talk to some people if anybody needs help. Sounds good to me. One of the tactics used by Border Patrol is to fly really low to break up a group. If you're only carrying a backpack with water and food and then you lose that, then you're in a really, really bad situation out here. Humanitarians told us that agents will sometimes wait a few days to detain migrants just so they're exhausted from being in the and desert. So right now, very likely they've found a group, put it real low so that the group scatters in all directions, which is a really dangerous thing because that's how people get lost and that's how a lot of people end up dying. Necesito agua! Scott says this crisis of death is the result of a larger American condition, hostility toward outsiders who don't look like them. Even if you think that it's just fundamentally wrong that there are people here in these lands who were not born here on this arbitrary line in the sand, don't just hope that they die out here, because that is the punishment for trying to cross into the United States, is death. Scott grew up on a ranch and regularly saw migrants passing through, including a teenager who collapsed from dehydration right in front of him. It's one reason why he does this work. At the end of the day, all of the efforts I am putting here made it a real material life or death difference to at least one person. One of the lingering questions around Martin's case is, what were Border Patrol agents doing just waiting at the bottom of the mountain when volunteers finally arrived? 
and we asked, well, why can't you get him? Why, why aren't you guys getting him? They said, well, we're just, uh, we're not really supposed to. We're supposed to stay in this area. We basically carried Martine from the extraction point to the cars where we found, once again, this nonchalant nature that that Border Patrol carries with them about life and death. And when asked, why, why did you guys not pick him up when you knew he was there, there were helicopters over there, his answer was he needed to be closer to death in order to be extracted by Boris Star. How could they have known that? They were in a helicopter. We met with representatives from Border Patrol to get their perspective on what happened. We've heard firsthand accounts from civilians who had to rescue a migrant despite placing numerous calls to 911 that, that went to the center. Why didn't Border Patrol rescue him? Uh, I'll have to look into that specific case of, of the nature of that case, but if I do remember, this particular person was rescued, I believe, a few days after that. He was rescued, but he was rescued by a civilian search and rescue team. They gave, thank God he was rescued. They gave thank you God. guys the coordinates, they gave you guys a copy of his ID and his cell phone number, and yet he was still stranded on the Baba Kivari Mountains for three days. So why wasn't it Border Patrol that rescued him? Uh, again, I'll have to take a look at the nature of that specific case to get you some better answers. Those civilians also said they encountered an agent who indicated that a helicopter couldn't rescue him because he wasn't near enough to death. How close to death does a migrant need to be for Border Patrol to rescue them? Well, no, well, see, the Border Patrol will rescue somebody, someone. It doesn't matter if they're near death or they're not death. If we have a asset nearby that can rescue somebody, we will use that asset. Does it sound to you, though, like that's prioritizing the lives of migrants? Well, we have to prioritize the calls, not necessarily the lives of migrants. We don't believe every single life is precious to CBP and to the Border Patrol, but we have to make decisions based on the nature of the call itself that comes in. We would love to say we have unlimited resources. We don't. Aid workers told us what happened to Martin is a chronic problem. One study showed that more than half of all distress calls in the Tucson sector don't result in any confirmed search or rescue, even though the agency has a special unit called Borstar to do it. After our interview, Border Patrol contacted Frontera Aid Collective to say it wanted to set up a meeting. But as of publishing, it's failed to follow through. Instead, Scott and Taylor are getting on the phone with Martin today to see how he's doing. Vino Mirna. Hello? Hola. 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 ¿Cómo está? Alegre, feliz y de volverlos a ver otra vez ya. Que sea por videollamada, pero ya los volví a ver. Sí. Y nosotros estamos felices verte también. Ya pasó en, en febrero, que hace mucho tiempo, hace tres meses casi. Y en todo ese tiempo hemos estado intentando hablar con la patrulla fronteriza y ver que hay accountabilidad para que es más fácil que van por la, las personas que se pierden y se queden atrás. No, sí está bien, porque incluso yo he visto noticias todavía ahorita y incluso a veces hasta lo suben en las redes donde incluso han muerto, han muerto otras personas. Ahorita que yo ya vine acá. Yo he visto que a veces ha tirado las noticias que desaparecieron, que están muertas y no saben quién son sus familiares. Sí, es, desafortunadamente es algo que pasa todo el tiempo aquí. Es la realidad. Hay que sacar... Um, más noticias de eso para que la gente llegue con más, más educado de lo que pasa para que no riesguen sus vidas tanto. No, sí, es complicado, pero en fin, ya, ya lo viví, ya que por lo menos ya fui a probar, tuve la experiencia, lo que viví para poder regresar hasta mi casa con vida otra vez. El guerrillero. <risa> <risa> es un gusto verte. Muchas gracias. Chao. 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 Martín spent 10 days in an immigration detention center after being rescued. Volunteers found him severely dehydrated and weak. All of his toenails fell off and his feet were so blistered he couldn't stand for weeks. His extended family from another village took out a $10,000 loan on their home to try to get him to the U.S. He doesn't know how he'll pay the money back. 